If you think in that angle, definitely you have to think, are we using any green and clean form of energy? Are we adopting any green energy generation practices? Are we looking into that industry as a future? If you think in that perspective and coming for this webinar makes sense. Why? Because you are going to look about the green energy technologies, different technologies, what it is, what is its impact, what are the benefits? how it actually works and what are the trends, future trends of the particular technology and what are the opportunities available. The opportunity is not only limited to a person or a student or any kind of particular community. I am going to address available in the green energy sector. Let's start with the presentation. What is green energy? So green energy is basically come from natural sources such as sunlight, wind, rain, tides, plants, algae, and geothermal heat. These energy sources are renewable means it will it will come again and again and again. So if you take today, tomorrow again it will come. It's it is it is perennial actually. But if you go for a non-renewable energy, I mean, uh, non-renewable energy sources or conventional energy form, you cannot retrieve the energy once it is used. So basically, it is one-time use. Once you exploit the resource, it, it will not again replenish back. So whatever the coals, lignites we are taking from the ground, earth, and we are using for the thermal power plants, you think that you are actually exploiting the resource and you are left no coal for your future children. And also, uh, to, to get a fossil fuel, it will take million of years to get it again back. So if you, if you see a lignite or a charcoal, it takes thousands of years to become to that position. Do you think if you take everything from Earth today and getting something after 10 years is not at all possible? So, we have to think very deeply about what is the alternate thing we need to do for it without touching the fossil fuel, without touching the natural energy resources which is plentifully available in the earth. If you think in that perspective, going for an energy source which can be easily obtained without investing any money for the raw material, fuel, or Again and again you can get it. That's what you call it as a perennial source. So 
green energy which is the renewable energy technology is a technology or energy form where you can use the energy again and again without spending anything for the raw material so let's see what are the different green energy technologies available so the first and foremost is solar power see no solar power solar power is the energy obtained from the sun you know the energy from the sun is in the form of radiation one is the light radiation another is the heat so you can able to generate electricity or make the energy from the sun for any of your application in the two ways if you convert your light energy into electricity that is called a solar photovoltaics if you up if you observe the heat from the sun the radiation of the heat from the sun and store it for your water preheating purpose or if you apply the heat from the sun to heat a molten uh, salt or an uh, oil to store in a solar thermal power plant as a reservoir so that we can generate electricity also so either two possibilities are there one is you can generate electricity from the light and it is a form that you can generate electricity from the heat so these are the two primary sources of solar power applications which is been practiced and solar energy is not only about this it has many applications in our real time life like heating of water heating the buildings during the winter seasons providing the natural lighting and also most of the places where we we used to cook food i mean so having a solar parabolic dishes and uh, uh, solar cookers and it's a very cost effective thing uh, without investing any money in a very big way you can able to do you can make preheating applications very well for cooking for uh, you know like uh, drying of things all these stuffs next one of the main form and the most successful form is the wind power the wind power basically the inflow of wind which actually rotates the turbine so that the windmill will rotate and electricity will be produced so you have alternators on the windmill which will generate electricity and that will be exported to the grid so usually wind is in wind is possible only in the areas where you have enough wind speed whereas the former case solar is not that solar can be installed almost everywhere where you get an enough sunlight at least for your basic thing and it's more flexible if you talk about solar you can install a solar power plant for just a 10 watt for your home lighting system or you can install a 600 700 megawatt plants or even 1 gigawatt plants also in a large utility scale power plants so the biggest success of solar is the flexibility the flexibility of the system the success of wind is wind is having high utilization factor in terms during the generation period but the gestation period is more in wind out of 12 months if you take you probably have the uh, proper wind for the maximum of 4 to 5 months rest of the times we will not be considering wind as one of the main source as a base load plant so this is one biggest challenge with the wind and also it is only a regional specific kind of power generation technology only on the shores only on the places where more wind is there of course if you look uh, india is one of the leading generator of wind power uh, in asia and we are doing very fantastic work in this sector next is hydropower hydropower is something like using the water for your generation purpose so what about the natural water so water which is coming to the dam and uh, by means of rainfall and also using the tides from the oceans and also from the force of water from a uh, uh, no the tank head which used to called as a water heads so we can pump the water store it in a higher place and again use it for electricity generation or basically dams will be at the higher altitudes and the water which is opened from the dam will have higher uh, velocity and that will actually uh, rotates the 
wind or hydro hydro turbines and that will actually coupled with an alternator and will generate electricity so hydro power is also one of the most successful but the biggest challenge in a country like india is we are completely depend on monsoon so if monsoon fails and if we are if we are uh, actually failed with getting enough rainfall then the hydro power will actually uh, is not a suggestible option and moreover it needs it to set up an hydro power plant it needs a huge infrastructural setup to go for you cannot simply create an hydro power station everywhere but uh, if you if you think comparative with wind hydro power is little uh, challenging in terms of infrastructure if you compare solar solar is far better than both uh, in terms uh, comparatively with wind and hydro power of course wind is also clean form of energy generation as because we are not emitting any uh, pollution or any kind of smoke or dust or any kind of thing to the atmosphere the natural water is actually used as a tool to generate electricity the another main form is the geothermal energy so geothermal energy is nothing but using the heat which is under the earth so the earth will be drilled and uh, the water will be sent through the tubes under the earth and the temperature which is under the earth crust is actually utilized by the water which is sent inside and that heat will actually convert the water going into the tube into one steam and that steam is again super heat uh, converted into an super heated steam and it is become a compressed steam and again it will run a turbine steam turbine again the same process continue the turbine will rotate an alternator and alternator in turn will generate electricity so this is the main uh, concept of geothermal energy of course the implementation of geothermal energy across the country is very limited we are seeing very less number of implementation of geothermal energy comparative to wind and solar because it needs lot of uh, complex infra complex construction procedures which is not actually been practiced here next is biomass as you know biomass is a uh, It's a, it's a it's a product which we are using as a waste in our day to day life, like a wood waste, sawdust, or any kind of agricultural waste, or any kind of food waste. Anything can be converted into an energy by means of uh, fear, uh, like methane gas formation, ethane gas formation, all these things. So basically, using this biomass will significantly reduce the ability on petroleum based uh, products which is being extracted from the fossil fuels or uh, say like petrol diesel or even the coal kind of thing instead of going for this regular kind of uh, fuel usage we can depend on biomass we can make the biomass to be get it burned and we can obtain the heat energy from that or we can generate electricity through the biomass gasifiers and all these things so this is one of the one of the another clean form of thing but still the biggest challenge for the biomass is the raw material which is the food waste sawdust and all this kind of stuff so you need the, you need to implement this biomass plants in the areas where you have the uh, availability of the raw material in case if you took uh, if you take a uh, solar or wind the raw material is uh, wind and the sunlight both will eventually come if you take the gestation period wind will be 4 to 5 months whereas sun will be out of 365 days you can get a good sunlight for 300 to 320 days so that is the main difference of the success of a technology the success is the source if you get a source constantly perennially and enough for the more number of days and that energy is more likely to be a successful thing and biofuels so like as how biomass has been used biofuel so you have, you might have been uh, come across like chetropa carcass 
so through jetropa we we, we are actually uh, making a biodiesel and uh, we are using the plant materials to generate uh, petro petro composite uh, materials which is used for uh, running an ic engine it can be the biofuel like uh, uh, biodiesel is one of the main successful things which is coming in the diesel diesel sets also so you can mix approximately uh, 15% of your uh, petrol or a diesel with biofuel and you can uh, make the system to run uh, which eventually reduce your uh, cost of existing fuel which you are paying and also the emission and smoke levels from the biofuel is comparatively less if you compare with the normal fossil fuel based things and you, you can see a statistics that biofuel provided 2.0 percentage of world's fuel transport in 2010 and have a potential to be reach 25 percent of the world global demand so it's a very good sign that the statistics says by 2050 will be reaching 25 percent but still the awareness of biofuel and acceptance of biofuel in using in their regular life is need to be improved a more kind of awareness in terms of biofuel is needed and more r d has to happen to make the biofuel to be accepted Let's see what are the future trends for this technology. So, if you see, there are the three kind of trends we can discuss about. One is enabling trends, which, which speaks about how the deployment of renewable energy is made and how it is more accessible to the residential and commercial energy consumers. This is one kind of trends. Based on that, we will classify. And the second is the demand-based trends. So, the demand-based trends is the consumption patterns about. Uh, how I am going to consume, how many loads I have, what is my kind of demand and uh, what are the policy of a particular cities, communities to go for a clean and green energy form of generation of electricity. So most of the uh, well developed countries have started moving towards uh, adopting green and clean energy form of generation and also they have a concept of sustainable living that is self-sustainability. So you generate your things. For example, you have a land, you generate your, you are doing your cultivation, you, you cultivate your crops, you you are eating your, your stuffs, you are cultivating your vegetables, you are eating your stuffs, and also you are generating the electricity for yourself and you are using yourself. So this is what you call it as an energy sustainability. So. But self-sustainability is the only thing which you, which makes you success. If you take this corona lockdown as one scenario, as an example scenario, people who have enough things required for their happy living is actually a self-sustained person. Anyone who depend on a shop or a person or any kind of other means is actually dependent. So one should be self-sustainable in the near future to become more happy living and as well as the, the growth will be much more than the regular trend if you follow a self-sustainability concept. The third kind of trend is the technology application. So it depends on how advanced technologies we can import in terms of managing the things, managing the electricity and uh, also the implementation of new technologies in the distribution of electricity powers, also in the generation of powers. So you, it is further classified like how uh, enabling trends is classifying as achieving the price and performance parity. So per price and performance parity means if you bring a new technology, let us take and let us take solar. When solar primarily comes into the market, energy, electricity market, people say the cost of electricity of solar per kilowatt hour is high. So already we are getting an electricity of per say four rupees per kilowatt hour from the means of burning a coal. And solar is coming into the market, let's say in 2008, nine. By the time the cost per unit of solar was around 20 rupees, 18 rupees, 20 rupees per kilowatt hour per unit. 
those times people say that it will not uh, successful it will not a successful technology or it will it is not a technology which makes a commercial viability so making the price of you know meeting the price or matching the price of existing technology is one of the critical challenge for any new technology comes into the picture not only it should match the price also it should match the performance the efficiency of the plant so it two things it should make so that decides the growth of the technology in the future and second thing is the advancements in energy storage so when we keep on thinking about the demand side and on the generation side we eventually has to concentrate on the energy storage because you cannot generate electricity all the time during the day and you cannot consume the energy during the day only your loads might be more in the evening time or even the night time by the time you may not be depend on any kind of energy sources like solar in wind also for five months you will be getting but other time you may not be so some technologies which more emphasize on energy storage in a distributed level you cannot set up a, a 50 megawatt 100 megawatt energy storage plant but everyone have their uh, energy storage in their local premises or a small office a home or a kind of warehouse where they have the energy storage to at least meet their basic energy requirements so this is one of the main sector energy storage is one of the upcoming sector which actually interlinks with the uh, renewable energy scope the third is the decentralization of energy distribution through iot and blockchain technologies so energy is so far we are generating in a very uh, concentrated place let's say we have a big thermal power plant and it is only generating and lot of transmission has to happen and again the distribution has to happen so we need to actually reduce the centralization concept and need to decentralize which means you can set up plants distributedly you can generate the power on those places itself and consume in those places itself so which actually reduces the huge cost on transmission distribution infrastructure and the manpower involved in that and the electricity losses which has happened during the transmission of power and also it, it is a it is a self sustainable concept basically you are making your generation and you are meeting your requirement and the next is the accelerated rise of wind power across the globe if you see uh, many countries who have a good wind resource started putting more wind as wind is having a very good uh, potential and also it has a very good profit margins in terms of the business sector and it's more form of clean energy for clean energy source coming to the demand trends if you see the rise of smart renewable cities even india also you 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 are aware of a concept of smart cities the smart cities government is bringing many uh, initiatives they are doing a lot of stuff in that and solar and uh, other kind of biomass is and other kind of renewable energy mechanisms are a part of a smart city project wherever it is possible to implement a technology uh, related to renewable energy related to a clean energy that has been implemented the most predominant technology which is used in the uh, smart city project is solar and biomass and uh, in some places Uh, wherever the wind resource is more government is connecting a microgrid uh, concept of creating a wind solar and uh, wind solar hybrid power plants the next demand trend is the big businesses coming to renewable energy as you know that renewable energy industry is one of the biggest industry and fastest growing industry in the world if you see the trends of green energy growth in the last 10 years across the world you can see a phenomenal growth in the country like india us and australia and also europe so the biggest push for the renewable energy move is to reduce the carbon footprints which is moving into the atmosphere because nowadays the biggest problem which our earth is facing is the climate change why climate change is happening 
because we are not giving, we are not allowing the earth to be of its own. We are pushing, we are emitting, we are throwing many things which eventually the earth is not recovered of. So we should be very clear about what we are giving to the earth because earth is going to be giving that back to us. So the biggest concern is the climate change. The climate reality consciousness has been increased a lot in the big companies. That's why they are investing more on the renewable energy. You can see many foreign companies have invested a lot of billions of dollars in this industry. You can just have a look at it. And even during this lockdown, even during this corona time, this renewable energy sector is the only sector which never faced a big dip in, in its shares. So it's still one of the most strong technology, most strong industry because we are more concerned, the people who are going to come in the future is more concerned about the earth environment, climate. So in order to maintain that emission of greenhouse gases, emission of carbon footprints, then switching to clean and green form of energy and very, very conscious about not deploying, not exploiting the resource which is available in the earth and which is which is actually not perennial. So this is one of the very important thing. And uh, next we we'll come to the technological trends. If you see the technological trends, increasing adoption of electric vehicle is also actually pushing the renewable energy market because we all know that going for an electric vehicle is actually avoiding a, a usage of petrol or usage of diesel. But if you further look into the picture, if you charge an electric vehicle with your normal grid, where in which the power from the grid is actually obtained by means of burning a coal, it doesn't make any sense. We cannot call it as actually a green transportation. We can only call it as a green transportation provided the power is generated also from the green energy form. Then only you can call it as a green transportation. However, we can, we can significantly reduce the impact of emissions, impact of carbons uh, into the, the carbon footprints into the atmosphere by just switching to electric vehicles. But still, the actual benefit to the atmosphere comes where the generation of the electricity to charge the electric vehicle is also from a renewable energy source. So that's why uh, in India there is a green corridor which has been set up which is connecting uh, Jammu and Kashmir to Kanyakumari, a separate dedicated electric grid line which, which, is, actually on, which is actually created to evacuate and connect only the renewable energy power. That is the green form of wherever the wind is there, wherever hydro, wherever solar, it is all connected to the green corridor. So which is a 440 kV line and which has a higher capability to connect across the country. Then next is the artificial intelligence and electricity. So whenever we are more switching into the artificial intelligence, our things become very easy and simple. And uh, moreover, uh, the electricity style, the usage of electricity and the electricity monitoring style is also changed. You can see earlier there is only a big plant. Nowadays people start putting plants over the top, let's say one kilowatt of plant, two kilowatt of plant. People start putting in their own houses on the rooftop. And many microgrids have came into the picture. More rural areas, they started developing their microgrids. They are generating the electricity for the small community. And third thing is about how we manage the electricity. It's a kind of smart metering concepts. So everything here, hereafter, it is going to be accounted. So you cannot simply say, or you cannot, you need to have, go to the electricity board office and again pay the electricity bill. And you cannot consume the electricity uh, even if you're not paying the bills. So those concepts will not be possible in the near future once the smart metering concept is implemented. And also you can view everything in your mobile phone. You can pay your electricity bills in your phone. 
and uh, the meter has the complete control of giving electricity or not so it will decide so basically how your dt gets service your uh, tata sky or sun dt gets or uh, video con dt gets uh, direct to home is working like if you have a card and if you are not recharged it your channels will not be visible similarly if you are not having enough money in your electricity bill account you are automatically through the cloud through the communication automatically it will switch off your it will cut the relay will cut off your uh, load and which means your house applications will be made shut down the third thing in terms of technology trends is energy storage which we already discussed about so three things is going to change the face of future i mean the next two decades one is energy second is transportation that is the e mobility electric mobility electric vehicles and other stuffs and uh, third thing is the energy storage so as much as we are developing we are growing in an energy platform and energy storage platform we have more flexibility to go for any kind of energy generation and we can store it and use and also if we have a better technology on energy storage it will be more easy for a remote access nowadays we all limiting and get stuck with a point of connection of source because we can't able to take a charge and travel but if you if you see in future you might have a battery bank in a big to keep it in your car you can travel you can connect you can use it so so far even though we have a conventional battery systems and even to the updated lithium ion or lithium ferrophosphate or lithium polymer we still not the energy storage technology has become more commercialized and more successful why because the cost of the system and second is the efficiency life cycle of the batteries so working more and more innovations in the r&d side of energy storage systems will definitely be a big part uh, a break in this industry uh so uh, this is about the green energy technologies and trends and how it is going to uh, move further in the coming days uh, this is the first phase of presentation which we about to discuss and there is one more topic which is there which is about the opportunities in green energy sector which we are going to see in, uh, in the next uh, slide before going to that slide i just want to take few uh, questions or kind of interactions with the audience about the uh, presentation which we made which i made so far so let us discuss on this for 5 uh, to 10 minutes and if possible we can continue the uh, next set of slides after that 10 minutes sir Raja Ganesh sir, yes. I have one question. I think uh, there is no question so far posted in the chat box. So on behalf of the audience, I will, I will ask one question. You see, uh, I came to know that uh, many people are when uh, they wanted to implement uh, a solar plant in their rooftop, but uh, uh, the problem is that uh, they are not getting you know uh, the net metering facility for domestic. So, what is the government policy regarding uh, the net metering, sir? Okay. So, I will reply on this. Net metering, actually, the concept of net, concept of net metering is adjusting the units. Let us take a case. If you are generating 10 units and you are consuming only 5 units at that time, and the rest surplus 5 units will be exported to the grid. So, the normal energy meter in your premises having the capacity only to it's a unidirectional meter it will only record what is your import energy don't have the capacity to record what is the export energy where comes the part of net meter which net meter records separately the import energy 
and also the export energy. So basically, a net meter, what it is going to do is, it will subtract the exported energy from the imported energy, and the balance net is actually shown in the meter. It will show the three parameters, imported energy, exported energy, net energy. So basically, in India, if you take the net metering policy has been widely changed in almost in the different parts of different states across the country. If you take uh, uh, Tamil Nadu in 2000 up to April 2019, it was net metering, which means adjustments of units. So a person who is under a commercial category paying eight rupees is is a guy who is going to enjoy more benefit. Why? Because he is generating his electricity and is exporting and again is adjusting at the rate of 8 rupees for each and every unit. But after what happens, after April, the policy become net metering to net feed-in, which means you can, you are actually generating 10 units, consuming 5, exporting 5 units. In the net feed-in case, the 5 units will not be just like that adjusted. Government will fix the average power pooling cost in that they will consider 17% which comes around 2.3 rupees. Again, this is a state specific thing as I am telling the concept of net feeding which is now coming in the Indian solar energy uh, net metering concept. In the net feed in net feeding, whatever you consume is actually adjusted in the real time. That means instantaneous consume, consumption. If you don't have a load and the power has been exported, in that case, your energy will not be adjusted in the form of units. Instead of that, they will adjust, they will consider a cost for that unit and that cost will be subtracted in the bill. Now, I address what is the problem in getting the meter delay. The problem is, the problem is, we don't have a mass production of net meter as because the industry is not that much mature. Second thing, government is restricting to procure. So far, government has restricted to procure the net meterings only through the discount. That is to the target. So now, government has given an option. Okay, there are so many backlogs happen. And because of the norm, the government is not also very clear about what is the maximum distribution transformer capacity that I can give. In some states, they have given 40%. Some states, they have given 60%. Some states, they have given 100% of the capacity addition in the distribution transformer capacity. So it depends. As they are very, what the clarity of their grid decides the smoothness of the net metering operation. Since the state governments, the discoms are not much clear about their grid network infrastructure and still they are much worried about the capacity addition of solar into the grid and they are worried about what is the impact of solar, which will, whether it will disturb the existing grid or not. The implementation speed towards the solar is actually less. So now government is allowing people's customers to procure net meter from the outside, for example, from the reputed supplier like LNT or Genus or uh, Big HL or whoever, whoever the uh, meter manufacturer manufacturing the net meter. Their net meterings can be procured by the customer and that meter can be taken to the MRT section of the electricity board, meter and relay testing department, and they can test that, they can calibrate that meter, they can certify that, and that meter can be installed in your premises. There is no necessity to wait to uh, obtain the meter only from the government. Now, government has given a relaxation that you can procure the meter from enlisted or approved uh, meter manufacturer and that meter can be tested and approved by a government agency and that can be installed. So now, almost your question is the biggest problem for the industry, but now government has given a relaxation and a, a channel to address that issue. Yeah, thank you, sir. Few more questions is there, but we can continue question answer session after your presentation. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Just, uh, I request you to kindly note down the question. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Take all the yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll be continuing the next set of uh, presentation.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Perfect. Sir. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So, uh, let's start, let's start uh, discussing about the kind of opportunities which is available in the renewable energy sector. As this has already been addressed about what is a renewable energy and what is the significance of it. So, let's see the job prospects in renewable energy sector. So, there is there are so many bodies uh, across the country which actually addresses about the demand of a solar and the demand of industry and demand of the job seekers. So IRENA, IRENA is one of the international agency which mainly addresses on all the three topics about the demand of industry, sector, technology and also the peoples. So it actually predicts, predicts the number of people employed in the renewable energy sector across the globe will rise to 24 million by 2030. So it's a very phenomenal increase in, in kinds of in kind of uh, the employment opportunity, and also it forecasts the global investment will reach 1.3 trillion dollar per year in 2030. So you can see the global investment it's happening across the world. It's not a technology which only you know restricted to particular uh, glo particular region. Renewable energy is a demand for the world, so everyone should really look into that. And also, it states that 19 trillion uh, it has that kind of global economy and create about six million jobs by 2050. And you can see there is a 125 percent of growth rate in terms of solar jobs in America because. Uh, America is one of uh, fastest growing in terms of solar, well compared to India also. So Americans are much more concerned about yeah, yeah, yeah. energy. So according to World Economic Forum, this advanced energy vertical 1.4 trillion global energy. I'm getting a lot of noise. Sir, you can continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it is clear. So the majority of renewable energy jobs are available in China, India, Japan, Brazil, US, and Germany. If you go and check LinkedIn and if you type renewable energy jobs, solar jobs, you can find a lot of stuff. And you know, Canada is also one of the country who, who observes more migrants now. And they are also one of the premier in the solar sector. And not only in the solar sector, the renewable energy sector is one of the most predominant and accepted technology and sector in countries like US, India and Brazil. And 62% of all renewable energy jobs are based in Asia. So it's one of the biggest thing. Why? Because we are more blessed with the kind of uh, solar potential, then wind potential, and also the hydro potential. Let's see what are the career paths in this renewable energy sector. So the renewable energy sector needs the workforce, which means the manpower in the diversified background skill set, which means in the different dimensions. So these are the uh, different dimensions of the job opportunities, ecologist, biologist, physicist, geologist. This ecologist, biologists are coming under the biomass category, biodiesel categories and all these stuff. Physicist, geologist, they are architect, they are coming under the solar uh, and wind kind of stuff, structural engineer, planners, project managers, these job roles are common for almost all the kind of uh, uh, technology infrastructures. And uh, computer science, communication, business developers is almost needed in all the business. If you take either any kind of technology, now the IoT, you can, you can find uh, now farm boards also, uh, robots which can do the farming. Uh, there are many technologies which, which is automated, almost even the agriculture is also automated. 
So those are all completely monitored by the computers, by the sensors, by the transducers they have in the place. And that will actually control the amount of water which has been dripped, the kind of growth of plant and wherever weeds is growing, the camera will find it. Automatically, the cutting machine will go, cut the weeds and it will allow the plant to grow. And also it senses the temperature there, it maintains the temperature, it maintains the sunlight, I'm measuring the lux level, everything is there. So, technology is one thing and uh, advancement of technology is second thing and third thing is application of the technology is another thing. Application is more, the application should be more friendly and really needed for the mankind. And uh, another foremost important thing is the compatibility. How, how a user, how a person can relate with the technology. So that is actually made for possible and feasible by this computer science and communication professionals. Because now you see earlier this kind of talks is happening by means of calling an expert and the expert will come to your conference hall or a seminar hall or an auditorium where the mass setup has been done. All the people have been gathered here. Today I am seeing just 150 students are there in the webinar. Earlier to, uh, to make this webinar, 150 students have to come all the way from their home to the college and college to the classroom and from the classroom to the auditorium. And there are a lot of free arrangement has to happen and personal addressing systems mic, speakers, everything has to be set up. And again, you cannot see me closely and you may not be much audible. And you don't have the option to record it or make the presentation for your reference. Now, how a technology and communication make that possible? So, this is what the success of a technology to our little level of understanding. And altogether, the main, main and foremost thing is the business development. Whatever the technology, whatever the uh, new green and clean form of sector we are handling, unless it has been developed properly, unless it has been promoted properly, people may not have the knowledge or experience, you know, uh, awareness about it. People will not be able to accept that. So that is one of the most challenging part. So before 10 years, before 15 years, when people are discussing about coming for solar rooftop plants, or uh, before 20 years putting a windmill. It is all a nightmare. So people have never looked about it. People are not understanding it. People are not believing the technology. People told that uh, the cost of the system is more high. People told that uh, it is not possible to get a loan. People told that uh, it is not possible to get a break even. So this, the technology evolvement, the acceptance of the technology and the usage of the technology made it possible. Today, you can set up a solar plant for uh, for a domestic application, for a commercial application, even for a large scale. And uh, the return of investment by putting, you are putting a money as a capital cost to set up a plant. And if you calculate but how many years it will take for me to get that money back as a return by means of a generation or a savings, the typical solar plant uh, for a commercial category, it can take its return of investment in a matter of four years. It is possible now, if you go back 10 years back, the ROI will not at all be calculated or it is not at all be possible. So that is the kind of transformation which happened in this industry, in this sector. So still it is going to be much more feasible and possible by means of accepting this technology. Like everyone should really think about switching to green, switching to renewables and uh, the mass adoption of this technology will really make it feasible for each and every common human man in this society. And uh, coming very specific to the kind of opportunities for the engineers, their roles are the very important role in implementing this green technology and they design the systems and uh, Whatever the wind farm or dam or solar, the role of an engineer is really important. I will tell you about where and all the big opportunity for engineers in this sector. The major uh, opportunity for the uh, engineers in this sector is the design. So, 
if you take a solar plant or a wind plant there is a concept of energy yield assessment which means before installing the plant you need to do an assessment for it so assessment is nothing but evaluating if i put a plant in that particular place what will be my expected generation of electricity from that project so you cannot invest lot of money put the plant and measure it by saying that okay i'm getting this much so prediction is really important because if you fail to put up a wind mill in a proper place where you are getting an enough wind you may not be making profits if you fail to put a solar power plant in a place where you are not getting an enough sunlight you will not be making a proper generation which means you will not be taking your money back on time so doing the energy yield assessment doing the simulation studies of the plant generation and designing the plant so design is the critical part for any projects in the solar and in the renewable energy sector you take any sector let's say solar or wind or hydro or geothermal this energy yield assessment and design of infrastructure design of systems if you take a, a solar as an example design an electrical si system is one of the important part design of mechanical structure is one of the important point design of the civil structure is one of the important point and again making the financial options making of loans arrangement of schemes or any kind of getting incentives from the government this this comes the fourth part before that to make a project as a, a successful or a full full proof project uh, design engineers play a very important role because the capital cost of the projects which are going to execute under the renewable energy systems are much higher than the other sectors so this is one of the crucial part where solar engineers have a big challenge uh, when book big scope and opportunity to go for and second thing they have the higher opportunity in terms of uh, supervising it executing the works then uh, managing the things and all these kind of steps that also we'll see in the following slides so next uh, the people who is going to benefit of coming to the re is the farmers so traditionally farmer go for producing the fruits and vegetables now uh, they are growing food not for the kitchen table but instead of for automobiles cloth dryers also and uh, uh, people are start using bioenergy people are preparing the uh, ethanol or uh, like from the methane and uh, or, or also the uh, sugar cane wheat coconut oil palm all this from their uh, produced products and also even some places jetropa is also uh, cultivated in lot of land areas and they are using as a source for biodiesel so these these are all the um, opportunity for a farmer sec farmer as an uh, beneficiary so earlier they are doing only the vegetables and fruits now their concentration have been slowly shifted to uh, making a, a product which is useful for biofuel or it's for the biomass generation the next is a uh, solar fabricator solar installer so which is which i told you uh, solar designer is the, the part where which we discussed earlier is engineer who do the design and estimation studies once that is done the next part is the installation of solar plants so that involves the installing of solar panels uh, then putting the civil structures mounting the mechanical uh, structures to place the panels and making the electrical cable connections and making the earthing connections and all these things to do this actually you don't need probably a degree also you basically you need a, a skill training there are two things one is the formal education another is the non formal education uh, in formal education you will be having a curriculum syllabus unit and uh, semesters exams and practical laboratories Uh, then theory classes assignments and all these stuffs there is another form which is the non formal education the non formal education is mainly focused on upskilling the guy 
for example if a guy is having a little knowledge about electricity then he is having a he is a semi skilled or unskilled person on electrical sector so the the, the idea is to upskill his skill so he is having some skill under the sector but it is not actually an organized skill so there are many many platforms there are many uh, uh, industry many training programs many skill development initiatives are there which focus on observing uh, students right from fifth standard and itis diploma engineer up to master degrees it depends on the level of skill development courses which is available in respective sectors it may be solar it may be uh, a biomass or it may be electronic sector skill whatever it is so based on the skills they already have they can take up a course which will enhance their existing skill and make them employable if you take solar installer there is a course course called solar installers same course surya mitra most of the people have that name in terms of surya mitra the solar installer course is a flagship program where it and diploma guy have the uh, eligibility to enter into this course so that is a that is a three months course the same course in a short term they can study in the one month also so this course make them capable to install a solar power plant on rooftop and also they can mount the panels check the connections install the systems in the ground mounted systems also this immediately make a guy who is not much into a degree but with a minimal knowledge he can take up this course and he can venture into one uh, job or he can start an entrepreneurship venture so this is one of the uh, source of getting into a skill development sector as a as a learner you can learn it and again you can immediately get a job and uh, next is wind farm developer so developing a wind farm can be extraordinarily fulfilling career because it, it actually uh, gives enough money making options uh, in a long term again uh, it depends on the discoms in which you are being getting connected most of the international business wind business is more profitable you can see lot of uh, companies like vestas gamesa siemens and all this all these big companies they are doing a very phenomenal uh, business in the last decade and people who have the wind farms is it's a, it's a one time task and you do, you probably have a very less kind of maintenance comparative to the other form of uh, energy generation practices if you take a thermal power plant it has more uh, kind of maintenance if you take a solar the biggest maintenance is scaling of module if you take a wind wind mill the wind farm the biggest challenge is the wear and tear make a regular maintenance for the wind uh, governors and alternators which is kept on the top so that is a very important thing and rest of the things wind is also one of the promising sector then um, the scope of wind turbine fabricator installer operator is one of the booming opportunity you can find lot of wind mills in uh, tamil nadu and uh, there are many ancillary companies which has been uh, started across the state right from trichy to tanjore road and uh, chennai there are a lot of companies are there which they are primarily working on uh, making the uh, wind mills equipments the towers windmill towers windmill blades windmill uh, heads and governors alternators and all the other balance of systems involved in that so tamil nadu is being one of the biggest hub for uh, uh, contribution of windmill to the indian market the manufacturing is also more widely happen in the south indian states let's see the other career opportunities so civil engineer has a huge scope in terms of the green construction areas then uh, consulting services because whenever a new project comes you need to go for a uh, consultancies so you can have a small description about uh, what are the works which has been involved about like planning designing construction maintenance of structures 
building of roads, airports, bridges, and all these things. The next financial analyst for renewable energy companies. Financial analyst means if a company is having a money and they want to venture into the solar sector, they need a consultant to analyze financially whether how much it is possible and feasible to go for this. So that is that depends on the business model which which a financial analyst is suggesting. They suggest if you invest on this plant and if the plant will produce this much of power, you probably make this much of money out of it during this span of time, and you will get this much of internal rate of return as a invest as a result of the investment, and your investment will be get back in this particular period of time. And this is this is the kind of tax you will be paying every year, and this is the kind of profits you are going to make every year. So this is the role of financial analyst, and see that it's a, that role is going to be have a growth of 10.9 percent by 2026. And the next is the environmental scientist and specialist, and their growth is also have a phenomenal rise. And construction managers, their jobs is also going to be get rise. So basically, who are involved in financial analyst and environmental enthusiast and people who involved in the construction of infrastructure? So construction of infrastructure means in whenever infrastructure comes into the picture, mechanical, civil, electrical eventually comes on place. So those people are having a, a increase of a job growth in the near future. Then next is the software developers. Most of the systems which is connected with the technologies have back-end softwares. So that industry is also having a big scope. So people who are working on IoT, Internet of, Internet of Things, and uh, cloud-based platforms, and artificial intelligence, they have a big future. So any technology cannot be limited only to one kind of application. And even the image processing, uh, motion capture, the imaging techniques, all these things is really needed for all the industries. So basically, uh, a software developer guy is not only really, uh, you know, restricting him only to the IT sector. Basically, he has to take the problem statements of problem statements of all the sectors and see what is possible and where can I can contribute or uh, by means of my technology what problems can be addressed. So if you look in that perspective, definitely there is a big scope for the software system developers. And uh, next is the training and development specialist. Of course, to do anything, you need a knowledge and a proper guidance. So people who are involved in the kind of training and development is having a big thing because many people uh, uh, need a place to learn actually. Since, the, of course, there are a lot of platforms available to gather a knowledge you need a place to sit and learn so or a person to mentor or a person to have a guide you so that training and development is really one of the promising sector those jobs also is going to have a rise of 11.5 percent and atmospheric and space scientists then environmental science and production technicians these people also have a equivalent scope but again it, it's all in the it's all in the Tire A kind of job opportunities, but whatever we have seen is actually applicable for the people who are under the graduations or under the degrees. The next is the structural line and steel workers because it's for the green construction or manufacturing. These people is really needed. That's why you can see a very high growth of 12.8 percent. And finally, the electrical power line installers and repairs. So those their growth is about 14 percent. It's one of the highest growth. So the next five to ten years, you can see a phenomenal increase for the demand for electrical engineers uh, everywhere, in every sector, every industry. So, I, I strongly suggest, I strongly recommend, I strongly insist people who are in the energy sector, who are looking to venture into the energy sector, who are looking into work into the renewable energy sector, who is, who is actually from the electrical background, please pay attention, work more on that, try to capture the right opportunity, work more on that particular sector because sky is the limit for uh, the renewable energy technology. As much as you put your work on it, definitely 
more opportunities open and the opportunity is not only limited to your country it is open across the globe so so this is all about the opportunities which is available